Welcome to my series, Coding for Kids in Python. In my previous video, we learned some various tricky ways to print in Python. We printed an apostrophe and double quotes using escape characters. And to recap, an escape character in Python is the backslash. We also use backslash n to print multiple lines to our console window. And after these um, different print functions, I also gave a brief introduction about variables and we created our own variable and assigned it our own value and then we use this variable in our print function in today's video we'll go a little more in depth about these variables and I will show you some important facts about how to use them in Python and um, with this brief knowledge about print functions and variables uh, we will do some fancy printing I will introduce you to F strings and we will see them in action. And this actually, this video wraps up our second chapter in the book, Coding for Kids in Python, written by Mrs. Adrian Take. And if you're liking this series, then please don't forget to like these videos and share them with your family and friends. And this is mainly, this series is mainly intended for kids um, to learn the Python programming language. And this series is actually in a sequential order, so I highly recommend you guys to watch those videos in the sequential order to get a complete understanding of all the concepts being discussed. And as you proceed, these videos will get more interactive. And actually, in my next video, I will introduce you to a new amazing programming environment, which is called Google Collab. And using this, we will um, try to attempt some fun activities in Python. Let's make coding fun. In our previous video, we saw how we can save text in a variable. We called our variable name, and we assigned the value Neha to it using the equals operator. And then we use this variable in the print statement, print name. Now let us go a bit further now with variables and see how we can save numbers in variables. What is your favorite number? Well, mine is three. Let us give our first, um, our variable a name. Let us call it favorite underscore number equals three. Notice that we did not give quotes around our number. Do you know why? In the previous video, um, in our previous example, we use string or text to be saved in our variable. By not giving quotes, we are telling Python that we want to save whole numbers in our variable. In Python, whole numbers are called integers. Now that we know there can be different types of values that we can store in variables, let us see how we can check what is the type of the variable. For this, we can simply write type open parentheses, and then our variable name, which is favorite number, and then close parentheses. And then we, um, this gives us a result, if we click enter, class int, which means our variable contains whole numbers. Now let us try with our other variable, type equals, I mean open parentheses, name, and click enter, and this says class str. This tells us the name variable contains, contains text or string. Okay, so now I wanna share with you some rules about variables. Number one, variables cannot start with a number. When naming variables, you want to be as descriptive as possible, but also have to follow some rules of Python. One such rule is that the variable name can't start with a number. Let us try to create one and see what happens. So how about 10 name equals Neha. And of course, it gives us a syntax error. This is because when Python sees the number at the beginning, it is thinking you are specifying integers. But when it is followed by a text, it gets confused and gives us an error. Number two, variables should have the same styling. If you have noticed, I've always used lowercase letters for my variable names. And when there are two words, I've separated them by an underscore. However, there are other ways to write variables like camel case. 
The first word is not cam- capitalized, but every other word is. An example is first name. F in the F in first is lowercase, and the N is uppercase. Or number of cookies. O and C are capitalized. And also there is Pascal case. Every word will be capitalized. So example, an example is first name. F and N are capitalized. Or number of cookies. N, O, and C are all uppercase. So number three, variables should have a meaning. It is a very good practice to give descriptive names to variables. By reading the code, one should understand what type of variable it is and what data it is supposed to contain. Some good variable names are mood equals happy, or age equals ten, or favorite. Color equals blue, and also we can do number of of books equals four. And number four, lastly, variables cannot have spaces. If you want to describe your variable with two words, you can join them together or use an underscore between them, as you can see, as we've done before. Now that we know how to use our variables, we can use them to do some fancier things with the print function. Let us see them now. So let us go back to one of our previous examples. And、um, now, what if I want to use、um, different adjectives instead of just happy? Maybe you are overjoyed or even delighted. How can we change the print sentence to the word that actually describes your feeling? We can do this using f strings. This allows us to print formatted strings, which are like normal strings, but set up in a specific way or pattern. Let us see f strings in action. First, we create a variable. How about mood equals delighted? Then, in the print function, we first use a new escape character, which is f. Also, we have to surround our variable names using flower brackets. So, go ahead and type print open parentheses f. Um, an open quotation. I'm so, and now we need the value stored in our variable called mood. So we surround the variable name with the braces. So so far we had print f I'm so, and then you open flower brackets, mood, close flower brackets, and then continue on with your sentence to be learning how to code in Python. Close、um, to be learning how to code in. Python. Now go ahead and close quotation and close the parentheses. Now, when we run this print statement, you can see that it prints the mood you are actually currently feeling. So go ahead and click File or Run Run Module. And now it says you have to save your Python file. So I will、um, let's save this file and give it a meaningful name. I'm gonna go ahead. And call mine.、Um, how about f string. dot py. So we can、um, change our mood to any other adjective and see how the print statement behaves. Now let's see our previous example of printing multiple line strings. So we have.、Um, let's open that. All right, so we have print. Here is a sentence on many different lines. Well, this code works fine, but it's not really. It's, it is really not in a readable format. Let us try to replace this by using f strings, which will make it cleaner and easier to read. First, we need a variable. Let's call it multi multi line underscore sentence equals triple triple quotes. So three quotation marks, and then you go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and type here is enter a sentence. Enter on many. Enter different lines. 
and enter and then close the three double quotes and now go ahead and um, do your print um, print function which is print open parentheses f open quotation and then for remember for the variables you need to store them in the flower brackets so open flower brackets multi line underscore sentence and then close the flower bracket close the quotation and close the parentheses so now go ahead and click run your um, file and there we go we printed our um, sentence here is a sentence on many different lines and this is a, a lot simpler and cleaner isn't it and in this code we can see that we have d defined our variable and assigned it a multi-line string in exactly the same manner in which we want it to be printed but we are also using three double quotes for the start and end of this variable assignment. These are called triple quotes, and you can use either three double quotes or single quotes, but of course do not mix and match. These triple quotes tell the computer to print out what um, we put in between them exactly the way we have it. With this, we have now completed chapter two in the book, Coding for Kids in Python. Let's recap this chapter with some important stuff we learned. Number one, the print function is used to write text output from our code to the console window. Number two, the print function sometimes has trouble printing certain characters, and we can get around it by using escape characters. And number three, we can print single or multi-line or multi-line text. And number four, another important topic we covered is variables. We saw how to assign values to variables and some Python rules about variables. Number five, finally, we learned some fancier ways to print using f strings i can't wait for my next video in the coding series i will be showing you guys something amazing which will help us all on how to code in python i think you guys should definitely stay tuned on mp station to watch my upcoming video in the series of coding for kids in python to test our knowledge so far we will try some to solve some fun coding activities. This will brush up our skills and help us think on our own and build, help building some analytical skills, which are very much needed for programming. So keep an eye out for my next video, which I will introduce you to Google Collab. Keep coding and keep on reading.